Hey YouTube, Untamed here. So we have spoken about the new and used vehicle market being in shambles within the US. However, the underpinning reason of all of it truly is inflation, the rapid rate of inflation. And I think that will come as no shock to most people, I understand. But in today's video, I really wanna paint a clear picture by providing some pretty alarming stats, facts, and figures about inflation at large and how it has impacted the American people and why that has had a consequential effect on the car market at large. So stick with me till the end. I'll leave the most interesting bits for last. Now, I think we can confidently say that the middle class has been stretched too thin. Now, a recent report has indicated that compared to three years ago, the average American household now spends over $1,000 more for quote unquote regular necessities, meaning food, insurance, rent, things of that nature. We're now spending $1,000 more just compared to three years ago. That's pretty insane. You know, it doesn't always snow in Wyoming, but when it does, it's in the latter half of April. Now we talked about it before, but I want to really foot stomp it here. One out of every five Americans with a new auto loan out pays over $1,000 per month, 20%. That's pretty crazy. But the average price that people pay per month is $712. That is up about $150 more than what it used to be just three years ago. That is a huge and very rapid uptick a faster uptick than we have ever seen in this country. For new, or excuse me, used vehicles, we've seen a $100 uptick in the last three years. So now we're looking at about $515 being the average monthly payment for a used vehicle loan compared to what it used to be about $413 just three years ago. Pretty insane, huh? Now we've talked about vehicle manufacturers upping their MSRPs over 36% since 2019. That is huge, right? And because of that, we're seeing the largest levels of repossession rates ever taking place in this country. The average negative equity that an individual has currently on their vehicle is just over $6,000. We've talked about that before, but those reasons right there compounded with inflation at large and the cost of living really has driven most Americans to a breaking point. And we can't talk about inflation without talking about interest rates. So with excellent credit, you are looking at a seven to 10% interest rate on a new vehicle purchase and up to as high as 15% with excellent credit on a used vehicle purchase right now. So when we look at those stats right there, it does begin to make a clear picture for the average sale price. So back in 2021, at the height of the pandemic, we were looking at an average new vehicle sale price of just under $50,000. Fast forward to today, we have actually seen our third consecutive year of a drop of the average sale price across the US. We're looking at 47,200 being the quote unquote average sale price within the US. And when you think about it, combined with the terrible interest rates that we've seen this last year and a half, two years, it does begin to make sense, right? Because what are dealerships having to do? They're ultimately having to slash the prices and really incentivize their deals as best as, as, best as they can. And that often means slashing the prices 10, 15%. So it is a small glimmer of hope that prices of vehicles are coming down. However, ultimately, if you think about it, even though the average sale price has come down a little bit over the last few years, the amount that people are actually paying through the term of their loans with the higher interest rates is higher, if that makes sense. So they're ultimately still paying more for the vehicle, but the actual sale price has come down. But that is still nice, especially knowing that MSRPs have gone up 36% since 2019. And Zillow actually released a report recently indicating that the average household income needed to live comfortably within a quote unquote typical house in the US has gone up 80% since 2020. Although at the same time, the average household income has only gone up 23% since then. So definitely does not add up. And because MSRPs have gone up so much over the years, we keep seeing top trim levels being offered and less bare bones models offered insurance premiums have gone through the roof. Back in 2018, for full coverage insurance, for an annual insurance premium, you're looking at just under $1,200. Fast forward to 2024 here, you're looking at over double that, $2,542 being the new average annual insurance premium for full coverage for a household. That's pretty insane. And do you remember when you used to make over six figures, you were technically balling out, you were wildly successful, at least you were considered as such, right? Nowadays, let me paint a picture of what the current classes look like. I'll talk through middle class, middle upper class, as well as upper class, okay? So middle class nowadays, you need to have a household income between $55,000 and $89,000 about to be considered middle class today. 
upper middle class, you need to be making between $89,000 and $149,000 within your household. And to be upper class, a quote unquote top 20% within the US, you need to be earning over $149,000 per year for your household. And if you think about it, I don't know about you guys, even if you fall in any one of those categories, you're really struggling. You are really struggling today to make payments on, on your rent, your insurance, the cost of li living, groceries. You are probably living paycheck to paycheck if you're within that middle to middle upper class, really. So honestly, what do you think truly is the standard cost of living or the standard income needed to live comfortably today? I would argue it is over $150,000 for a household if you're gonna live comfortably now. And although I just gave you the national figures, I do want to kind of paint a picture of the differences between locations, right? There are three cities within the United States where if you earn over $150,000 annual income, you're technically considered lower middle class. And well, it might not come as a surprise to you, but two of those three cities are within California. How about that? And you know, a lot of people like to draw a connection between the housing market and the car market. You know, although they're both kind of driven by the Fed's set interest rate, the housing market will see a much smaller supply offering because we have so many people who ended up buying throughout the last few years during the pandemic and they received a two and a half, two percent or three percent interest rate on their home. Those people aren't moving. They're staying put. When it comes to the automobile market, we're seeing vehicle manufacturers constantly pump out new vehicles. That supply isn't changing. In fact, it's just growing substantially at a huge, huge rate, right? That is very different from what we're seeing in the housing market. And because of that, the housing market has remained very high. We're seeing the downward swing of the new vehicle market in particular because vehicles are having to be discounted drastically in order for dealerships to move that inventory right now. They have to slash prices 10, 15% or even 20, 25% in some cases in order to get rid of that inventory. We don't have the same luxury with the housing market because there's a low supply and people are just holding on to their low interest rates. That is what I would argue is the main difference. You know, you can think of everything as a ripple effect. Because we are seeing such a huge uptick in the available new vehicle inventory, dealerships are having to slash prices drastically in order to move that inventory. We're seeing that that isn't even working in many regards right now. And because they're not able to sell their new inventory for the sake of not stacking up and piling up on their dealership lots, they're starting to turn away their, their allocations. Meaning they're actually saying back to the vehicle manufacturer, no thank you, we don't need this, we don't want it sitting in our lot. And what does that do? That forces that vehicle manufacturer to halt production or at least slow production of that particular vehicle. We saw it with the Mustang Mach-E just last month, they produced zero brand new Mustang Mach-E's. And we see it with the Ford F-150 Lightning, they've slowed production of that drastically. And what does that mean? That means that they are now having to lay off employees because they're no longer needing that full staff of employees in order to produce these vehicles. And what does that mean? That means we are seeing a, a bunch of more people who are unemployed at that point, collecting unemployment, often leading to a larger, bigger picture economic impact. And this, the whole new vehicle market, what does that do? That affects the used vehicle market too, right? When we slash prices of brand new vehicles, 10, 15, 20%, that will ultimately impact, in a very bad way, the used vehicle prices. And if you have a vehicle and you're trying to trade it in, well, you're gonna get a much smaller trade-in value for your vehicle. So what does this mean? What does this mean for the vehicle market moving forward? I think it means reputation matters. Reputation will now matter more than ever, and I actually like that part of it, right? We saw during the pandemic that so many dealerships just took advantage of people, they became extremely greedy, and they treated you like another brick in the wall. They treated you, the consumer, as just another number. But now, that doesn't fly. Now their reputation matters. So the people who got burned during the pandemic, well, they remember how that felt, and they will never go back to that dealership now, right? If they got charged, you know, $10,000 over MSRP for their Forerunner TRD Pro or whatever it was, you can best bet that they're not gonna go back to that dealership and good and rightfully so. So now, if you've treated people, if you're a dealership and you treated people well during the pandemic, you didn't take advantage of them, people will remember that and they'll go back to you. Even when times are tough right now, they'll go back to you, the good, honest dealership. 
You know, the American dream of owning your own home outright and owning your own vehicles outright is becoming much more unattainable. At least it feels that way, right? With the cost of new vehicles going up through the roof, the cost of housing going through the roof, the cost of groceries, the regular day necessities, blah, 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 you name it. We're constantly being nickeled and dimed. And well, income and how much we earn each year that isn't going up at an equal rate, right? We're not making as much as it costs to actually live comfortably these days. And that's a total shame, right? The American dream is getting much further away than we ever wanted it to be. What are your thoughts? All right, gang, we'll wrap up the video there. As always, I sincerely appreciate you taking the time to tune into these videos. I thoroughly enjoy talking about this type of stuff, and I really enjoy engaging with you all in the comments and seeing what your thoughts are on it. What do you think the future of the car market holds? Do you think we're gonna see a huge downward swing before the end of the year, or do you think it's gonna remain pretty steady until 2025? As always, I appreciate you watching. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing. Your support means a lot, and I definitely take note of it. Until next time.